Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Downhill Smooth Tarmac. Technical episode, we're in the workshop. It's raining outside again, surprise, surprise. And today we are doing something that is well inside of my comfort zone. As previous owner of a bike shop dealing in specialised steel lightweights, the Vintage Bike Cartel, this thing is right up my street. It's not vintage, it's retro. It's a 90s steel road bike. Dripping in Campagnolo Mirage, which is, if you remember, a mid-range sort of group set. We don't know what it is, but it belonged to an old customer of mine who was looking to give it a new home. In the pictures, I thought we were going to be doing a full-on restoration. Now it's here in front of me. This is going to be a strip down, refresh, rebuild with lots of polishing. So, what we're going to do, we're going to do a time-lapse strip down, get that out of the way, concentrate on the clean-up and the rebuild, lots of re-greasing and cleaning. We're also going to make some changes to the gearing to make it more to my liking personally. We managed to get a wider range set for the back, that took some finding. And I've had a new idea for up front, purely based around a chain ring that I found under the fridge just below my feet. Gave me an idea. I have these moments. Gave me this idea. We're going to see how it works out. Might not be to everybody's taste, but I will explain to you why I'm doing it. Stick around, see how that turns out. Let's roll the credits and get the time lapse flowing. Okay, so might have told you a little porky pie. Just before the time lapse, let's take a quick closer look at the bike, see the condition that it's in. As you can see, it's just dirty, very dirty and unused. It's not been on the road for a while. Frame, the powder coat is as to be expected in good condition because it's powder coat, that's why it's so thick. Spec is eight speed Campag, which is why it's been a bit of an ordeal to get any sort of cassette changes or anything like that, which we'll talk about later. Campag hubs, Mavic rims, Schwalbe tyres which are going to be going. Everything looks pretty good and is as it should be. Even the headset, got a nice Campag headset that's going to be refreshed. Only thing I've spotted on the first look is the bottom bracket. This is a common mistake made by amateurs and some bike shops alike. That is a Shimano bottom bracket. Square taper, that is wrong. You don't put Campag onto Shimano because it's slightly wider it will split the arm, particularly on the non-drive side. When I had my shop, this was a, a common thing that I'd find, especially with the 90s bikes that are coming for service, is that a previous bike shop will have fitted the wrong bottom bracket. Now, a lot of people, because it goes on, they think it's gonna be okay. They leave the shop, they ride it for a couple of weeks, and then it comes to a specialist because it's cracked the arm, and then you've got a whole other problem. But with that, I think even the bar tape's gonna come back, to be honest, it all looks good. Saddle's not to my liking, we'll see what we can find to replace that. In the meantime, now you can have your time lapse. Let's strip her down. Okay, so with that frame stripped down, it's now time to bring it back to life. We're gonna start with some T-Cut. This is a color restorative polish. It's mildly abrasive. And if you haven't used it before, it's really straightforward. Get it on a rag and work it into the bike. You're gonna basically work in circular motion, get into all the nooks and crannies, buff it in, and then once you've completed all of that, including the forks, you're gonna leave it to dry, and then you're gonna buff it off. And as you can see there, dead easy. It does take a little bit of effort, but it's a nice simple thing to work with. And you're going to be left with a nice, clean, bare and dry frame, which is important to mention because the next step after this is to feed up that paint and give it a lovely water repellent shine. I'm going to use a Carnuba wax for that. Again, a car polish, put it on there. This takes a little while to set in because it's quite a wet polish. Leave it to dry and then it's on to cleaning the parts. Sped this up because nobody needs to see this in real time. Basically, I'm using a citrus degreaser in one bath, clean water in the other, 
and I'm just giving all the parts a really good work over to bring them back to life. Be careful around the decals, anything like that. With that done, here we go. Let's get that Carnuba wax buffed in and we're gonna be left with a beautiful clean frame that is tip top and ready to go for the rebuild, which is in essence gonna be the next step. And here we go. Starting with the headset, gonna grease up the cups and the bearings and refit that. If you haven't fitted one of these before, these threaded ones, very simple. Just gotta tighten them up so that they there's no play. And then put the locking nut on the top. Okay, so once I'm happy with the headset, next step is to put that bottom bracket back in. Nice and straightforward. Okay, so as you can see now, the bike is beautifully clean. It's nice, clean, and shiny. It's been waxed, it's been polished. It's got some dirty, grubby marks on it where we've been refitting the bottom bracket. Now is an appropriate time, I think, to talk about my gearing. Okay, I'm gonna be honest, because I don't often put my failures on my videos, this one may or may not work. It's worked on all vintage bikes, touring bikes for a fair while, never done it with Campag. Don't know whether it's gonna work, but this is what I've decided to do. The Campag has to go off this bottom bracket because it's Shimano. I haven't got a Campag one, and as you guys know, if you've watched my last video about the Rally Titanium bike, I like to spin, and actually, I like a 46 outer. So what I've done is I've had a dig around and I've found a 46 outer. Strong light and a chain set that's Shimano compatible. It's actually a, an FSA or something like that. Now, the idea I had at the 11th hour was this 28 that I found under the fridge. Don't ask. So this has been talked about quite a lot lately by the likes of Party Pace on YouTube. And this is what a lot of people like to call a subcompact. So what I've got here is a 46 and a 28. Why I think it may or may not work is the drop. It is a big drop. It might work, it might not. Let's chuck it on, gear it up, and see how we get on. Okay, so that's the cranks going back on. You'll see there, actually, as a nice little touch, I've reused the Campagnolo crank bolts because they look really nice with that crank set but you can see that's fitting perfectly onto that Shimano bottom bracket. With that done it's time to align the front derailleur. Refitting that very simple just using Allen key. Line it up with the teeth as you need it to and then just do a quick adjustment for the top and bottom because we are changing the uh, distance with the derailleur and the cranks. Once you're happy with that, much easier task at hand, get the rear derailleur screwed back into the frame. Very, very simple. And then it's on to fitting the brakes. Brakes just need to be fitted back into the bike uh, just loosely for the time being because they're going to need a proper setup once we get the wheels back into the bike. Okay, so it's time now to have a look at the build and talk about the wheels. Look at the frame, spanking shiny, all the parts have been properly degreased, some have been polished as well with a little bit more sod and all of that sort of thing. Most of them haven't needed it. Do be careful, particularly with Campag, if you are going to be cleaning stuff with a metal polish, some of this era stuff, you'll rub the decals clean off. So just be careful if you're going to go for that mirror finish shine. For me, this is shiny enough. This bike's going to be used. It's not a show cream. Okay, so wheels wise, what have we got? We've got the original wheels. The hubs need no attention whatsoever. These Campag hubs are beautiful. Mavic MA2 rims are running true. Only change I've made is the tyres. Gone for some 25C Michelin Dynamic Classics, which are a bit of a favourite of mine. Got up from a 23 to a 25 as well. Out back, let's talk about the gearing just before we put this onto the bike. So at the minute, this is the cassette that came with it. 1323. 
is rideable, but not what I want. I'm trying to make a wider range of gearing on this. So I've managed to find probably about the last one of these you'll see new. 1328 Mika or Mish or whatever it's called. Found that from a, a delightful little bike shop online whose name I can't remember. I might put a link to them in the bio if I remember. 1328, it's gonna give me a one-to-one -one if my plans work on the front, but let's get there first. On with the build. So with those wheels in place, the bike's starting to look really nice. So let's get the chain on. And now is going to be the moment of truth to see whether this gearing idea of mine is actually going to work. Now I'll tell you for now, I haven't included it in this, but getting the chain length right for what I want to achieve was a bit of a task. It's just down to trial and error. Okay, so before we can try out that gearing, it's time to do a little bit more up front and it's to get those handlebars and stem back into the bike and get all that bar tape tidied up because it looks a bit of a mess. Now what I've decided to do here is try and reuse the bar tape. Just because it looks a bit tatty doesn't mean that it can't be saved. A lot of people when they do a build like this, and I'm one of them, you go straight to your go-to, order some fancy new bar tape, and just waste what you're taking off. As it turns out, this was perfectly reusable. It just hadn't been put on very well in the first place. Now for me, this is one of my favorite things to do on a road bike, vintage or otherwise, is the bar tape. I absolutely love doing this. I find it a very therapeutic thing to do. A lot of people don't. There are a lot of different ways of doing it but this is the way I do it. I start at the bottom and work my way up. I will do at some point a guide for beginners on how to do bar tape, but for the time being, you can see just how I've saved that bar tape. And with the cost of a pack of bar tape being, you know, 10, 15 quid, that is a great saving. That bar tape looks brand new. So let's crack on. So next step, as you can see, is to start threading all the cabling back through to the gears and the brakes. I'm going to tell you at this point, I'm reusing the cables that are already on the bike. There's nothing wrong with them. They've clearly had very little use. They're not frayed. Again, like the bar tape, don't replace it if you don't have to. With all your cables in and tightened up, it's then time to index. Campag Mirage is the same as Shimano. Start at the bottom, tighten the cable until you get a lift with the first click and you're good to go. Okay, so excellent news. My subcompact idea has worked a dream. Campag lifts and drops just perfectly. I can use most of the block on the small cog, all of the block on the 46. Generally, I find the 46 covers everything on the club ride quite happily. It's nice to have a little get out gear. Particularly, I'm probably going to ride this tomorrow. The ride we've got planned is quite hilly. It's nice to have that. So I've got a 2828, I've got a one to one going on. 1328 at the back, 4628 at the front. I know it's going to upset the purists, but I've got other bikes that are properly, properly vintage and original that I can cover that base with. This is all about making this usable. And to me, being able to spin your legs is really, really important. It's where I'm comfortable. And as I've said before in some of my videos, it's not your bike, it's mine. So as long as I'm happy with spinning, everyone's a winner. Let's finish it off. Just got brakes to do. Okay, so setting the brakes up 
is the last job and it is pretty simple. As long as the wheels are true, it won't take long. Feed the cable back through, pinch the caliper together towards the wheel and tighten. You can then adjust the centering with the spanner as you can see there, and you can adjust how close you want the pads to the rim with the barrel adjuster at the end of the cable. Dead, dead easy. Oh yeah, and always remember to really pull on the brake levers to make sure that the cable's tight, it isn't slipping, because this one is all about your safety. The very last job, bottle cages. Pop those bad boys back on, and this bike is ready to ride. Okay, so with that, another bike is done here in the workshop. And doesn't it look great? You know my feelings on that. I think it looks great, so my bike. The bikes come together beautifully, everything I expect from Campag parts from this era. As long as they're working and functioning, they go on forever and a day. So there it is. As you can see, Brooks Cambium saddles on the top, that can only be one thing. In my workshop, it means I'm going out to ride it. I don't know whether you can hear, but it's peeing it down in a minute, so it ain't going to be today. It might be tomorrow. Club ride day. Let's take out the club ride. Got lumpy 40 miles ready. Got one to one gears, what could possibly go wrong? Might take it on the club ride, let's see what happens. And with that, as always, it's time for the sign off. So I hope that your next ride is all downhill with smooth tarmac. Keep your rubber on the road, keep your wheels spinning. Most of all, be safe out there and have happy trails. Thank you to those that have already liked or subscribed to the channel does mean a lot I'm humbled by it if you've enjoyed this video give it a like give it a subscribe give it a share again I'm just a guy in the workshop building bikes and fixing things doing videos that I hope you guys will all enjoy if you've got any technical questions about the build anything I've done or you've got an idea for a technical video you might like to see me do shout up in the comments give me an idea if I can make it work I'll go with it I'm always up for new different videos to shoot so up to you guys, tell me what you want, I'll do. If you want to know how to do something in the workshop, just let me know, we'll get it covered. And that's it. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again soon.